What I want to do is uh, do a series of talks with you about firstly the process of passing and then the process of what happens when you arrive in the spirit world and what kind of things you may uh, find yourself involved with there. And then uh, I would like to go through a discussion of what the hells are like and what the first sphere is like, what summer land is like and then what the second sphere is like and the third sphere and the fourth sphere and the fifth sphere and the sixth sphere and by the time we get to the sixth sphere it's going to be fairly hard for you to imagine and then we'll talk, discuss the seventh sphere and what it's like in the one condition, uh, the eighth sphere and I want to do, and as I go on in my own progression I'll get better at explaining some of those things as well to you so uh, I'll hopefully I'll just keep on doing that until we get to the 22nd uh, but but from the seventh from the seventh sphere to the twenty second, it's far better demonstrated to you than actually um, talk about it. So so hopefully by that stage, I'm in the stage where I can demonstrate those things to you. So uh, that's a, a long term plan, shall we say? It might take a few years to uh, give you these talks in total. But we'll start off with this one, uh, this first the first one in the series, which is what happens when you die. And the re one of the things I would like to do is some of you are quite mediumistic, right? And you're going to get prompted with a lot of questions from the spirit world during these talks. And one of the main reasons why that is the case is because many spirits, even though they have passed, still don't know what happened. I don't mean that they don't know what happened when the, that they're dead, but they don't know what happened and why it happened and where they are now, why they are, where they are now, and any of those questions, they've never had them answered their entire life in the spirit world. And some of them have been in these places for thousands of years and never had those questions answered. So many of you who are mediumistic will have some strange questions prompted to you from, your, from spirit people. And uh, my suggestion is to overcome your own fears and put up your hand so you, and give them a voice in this discussion. Because uh, one of the main reasons why I would like to discuss this subject is that the majority of people on this planet and the majority of people still in the spirit world in the hells face one common fear, one common terror. And that is, even though we don't like to admit it to ourselves or others, and particularly when we become spiritual, we don't like to admit it to ourselves or others, but we're actually quite afraid of death. And many of you feel you're not, but when you actually start discussing it, you'll start feeling some of the fears rise within you about what actually does happen. You see, there are many false concepts of what happens when you die. Many of these false concepts have come about through different things that people have described. For example, some people have experienced the, the, the process of, uh, of a near-death experience. In other words, they have had a process where they've almost died, they've almost passed, but the physical and spirit bodies have not yet disconnected from each other. The, what's called the silver cord has not snapped. And so they have this metaphysical experience, which is a real experience uh, that their spirit body has that they remember. And many of those experiences are very pleasant in nature. Some, some aren't, but many are. And it gives many a false impression of what life's going to be when they've passed. And uh, we've also, in the last weekend, uh, Brian had a number of spirits come to him and ask the question, well, they had an out-of-body, they had a near-death experience when they are on earth before they passed. They thought because of that experience they would pass into a really lovely place. And then when they actually passed, they did pass into a really lovely place for the first few weeks. And then what happened is they realised how they looked after that and then they went to their real location in the spirit world, which was in a much darker position than what they imagined. And there was a lot of fear about that and a lot of sorrow that they were experiencing about that that they questioned us about last weekend. So what we want to do is make sure that as many of us as possible on the planet and preferably in the end everyone on the planet understands what happens when you die and really understands, here understands what's happening when you die. Because if we understood what happened then our life might be very different in the choices that we make now, actually. For many of us, that would be the case. 
Because for many of us, the instant we die, we realise that almost all of our pursuits that we have on earth are actually quite unimportant. You think about how much of your life is spent with material pursuits. Like, you know, getting a car, getting a house, paying for them. Um, you know, getting the kids off to school and you going off to work. How much of your time is spent working? A lot of times in a job you don't even like. Right? Now, why do we do all of those things? Well, a lot of times we do all of those things because in reality we're afraid to actually have our life and live our life in a manner that's harmonious with love of self and love of others. And what we do instead is we make a lot of negative choices which impact upon our soul condition, which also impact upon our life in, this, in the life we live, but then also impact upon our future life when we pass. And we don't realise how much what our life now, how our life now impacts upon our future life. So the first thing we need to understand when it comes to what happens when we die is, of course, many, most of us by now in these discussions, if you've come to these talks before, you realise that you are a soul and these two things, the spirit body and the physical body, are just appendages of your soul. So this body is just an appendage of the soul that envelops it. So in fact, we could draw it in this way. Here's our spirit body. Our soul envelops our spirit body. And then, and maybe I should draw it a different colour. Here's our big-headed uh, male again in his spirit form. Right? So we see we've got a spirit body and a material body, but I've drawn them over here so that we can see them separate from each other. But these bodies are just that. They are not the real our, us at all. They are only a reflection of the real soul condition, what is going on inside of the soul. Now, so it's our emotions. What else? Our passions, desires. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how we ream all this stuff off but we don't honour our soul. How many times do you not honour your emotions in a single day? How many times do you not honour your passion in a day? So it's one thing, isn't it, to ream off what is our soul and go, oh, it's our emotions, our passions, our desires, our intentions and all those things, right? Quite another to actually start feeling, this is who I am. I am this person who has this conglomeration of emotions, passions, intentions, desires, but also, what else? We also have beliefs, experiences, and all of these things become the sum total of what is within our soul. And our bodies are really superfluous, in, except they are the method in which we collect these experiences. They are the method in which we can experience the universe that we're growing up in. So, while we're here on the earth, we are in the nursery of the soul. So, so as long as you keep in mind while we're here on the earth that we're really just babies learning how to walk, that's really what we're doing here, you'll be fine. As soon as you forget that you're a baby learning how to walk and you think you're all grown up an adult, from then on you're not going to be so fine because you'll start being more self-reliant then. Right? But if we remember that we're just children just growing up here and when we enter the spirit world you could say, uh, it's like entering grade one. For a lot of people that's what it's like. And then, then they go through their spirit world life and they start growing up and they grow to a fully mature adult, shall we call it, which may take, for many of them, thousands of years. And we get to the stage where our soul even changes and our soul eventually unifies with a, the other half of itself in that 20-second sphere location. So, so there's a huge amount of growth that we need to make. And here we are in this spirit body and material body and it doesn't matter whether we're a spirit right now or we're in the physical body right now. It doesn't matter. The same principles apply that those two things are not the real self. That is the real self. And the real self has a collection of beliefs, emotions, passions, desires, longings and those, the collection of those things 
we've called, and I've told you about, called the soul condition. And it's very, very important to understand the soul condition because it's the soul condition that determines exactly what happens when you die and afterwards. It's the soul condition that determines everything. 